if just look at the EU petrochemicals industry, we're talking about 1,500 million tons of movements a year. 8% of all tons moved of freight of any kind, including retail, across the whole of the European Union are just plastics and other petrochemical products. We're talking about 60 billion a year spent on transport in, in euros. And yet, 100 million kilometers a year of trucking could be saved at a single stroke. I was talking at the European petrochemical industry recently. I said to them, what would be the cost of doing this? Oh, you see, here's the problem. What you got? Uh, you've got a, a factory over here in Frankfurt, and this factory over here is, uh, it, uh, needs, needs plastics and uh, is, is ordering polythene granules uh, from Liverpool. And they're coming on a, on a truck along, oh, it's uh, two or three days of, on the highways. Uh, a, a truck is carrying polythene pellets from your factory in Liverpool to Frankfurt. But what we don't know is that actually, at the same time, we've got another factory in Southampton, uh, over here, <laughs> it's ordering polythene granules all the way from Paris. This is madness. I said, what, what would it cost to sort this out? So you've got products passing themselves on the same truck. Trucks carrying identical product passing each other at a combined head-on velocity of over 120 kilometers per hour, 130 kilometers per hour. They're all going to go back anti and they're carrying identical product across each other's boundaries. What an utter, crazy, manifest, stupid nonsense. How much would it cost to sort that out? What do you think the answer was? 100,000 euros a year. I said, well, why can't we do it? Well, you don't understand how complex these things are. <laughs> I said, well, what do you mean? Ah, oh, well. You see, some petrochemical companies, they, they change the formulations of their products. So one man's polyethylene is not quite the same as another man's polyethylene. I said, please don't tell me that. Surely we can sort these things out. Actually, we have a moral duty to do so. Don't we? Hello? Isn't it manifest nonsense? to find the same product crisscrossing America, to find iPads going from, uh, from uh, let's say, I don't know, from, uh, let's say, New York down to, uh, to Washington, D.C., and another set of iPads going from Washington, D.C. to New York. Isn't this crazy? Crazy? We should sort it out. There should be one man in the sky who can see when iPads are moving from one place to the other. He says, well, actually, you don't need to do that, because actually, here in Scottsdale, uh, we, can, we can get the iPads in Phoenix. We just do it as a product swap. Could it happen? Yes, it could. Should it happen? It should. Will it happen? Not sure. <laughs> but it should. Actually, within this room, you have the collective muscle to make these things happen. Because you have the knowledge, you have the intelligence, you have the infrastructure to create a really intelligent, smart, joined up logistics and supply chain management process. It's utter madness that within the computer systems represented in this room are the identical products crisscrossing each other all the time. So I think, there's a, I think there's another stage we should go in terms of efficiency, and it has to happen. And with it, it's required a consolidation. In, in the EU, we've got over, I think, 4,000 uh, 4, 4, different trucking companies. The largest haulier has only 2% of the market. These things really don't help. We need consolidation. So in conclusion, what we're talking about is an amazing, exciting, exhilarating opportunity to do loads more with an awful lot less. To do something that's really, really groundbreaking in terms of how we think about supply chains, about improving customer service, about reducing costs, about conserving resources, uh, and generally doing the right thing. And I think that's, uh, that's is just a phenomenal opportunity right now, and uh, it's all part of building a better world.